Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, we are welcoming you here in the virtual space of Ahliya University uh, for the first uh, accounting and economics webinar, which is about the modern trends in accounting research forward-looking disclosure uh, by one of the uh, most uh, uh, well-known researchers in the world, Professor Khalid Husseini. A professor of Accounting and Financial Management in uh, Portsmouth University, UK. And uh, as you know, uh, Professor Khalid Al Husseini, he is one of the most well known researchers and editors in chief for uh, high ranked journals. Uh, he has uh, more than uh, 125 uh, refereed uh, paper, which is published in high ranked journals. Uh, Professor Khalid Al Husseini, he uh, got uh, many prizes like. Uh, uh, the best uh, paper in um, in in May uh, award for uh, from the British Accounting Review and also from the uh, Journal of Risk Finance. And uh, today we are lucky in Ahli University to have Professor Khalid Al Husseini who will talk with us about the forward-looking disclosure and about uh, corporate governance and the committee. And he will uh, connect it with the the contact uh, content analysis and the regression analysis. Uh, before we start, uh, we would like to have uh, an opening remark from the president of Ahliya University, uh, Professor Mansour Al Ali. Uh, Professor Mansour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to uh, be attending this, in my view, uh, an important virtual forum. And it's about, you know, an important field in research and in applied uh, situations. I think, but first, before I start, I would like to thank the department, uh, Dr. Abdul Muttalib, the chairperson, and Professor Alam Azadeen, for your efforts to bring leading international figures, to bring forward leading international professors and researchers who will enrich the, the Bahraini population, the Ahliya stakeholders, especially students and faculty with this knowledge. And as Dr. Al Muttalib, you mentioned, Professor Khalid Al Husseini is a well known figure and he's a leading scientist, so I'm sure you will benefit from him. My field is computer science, so if you excuse me, I probably don't know much about accounting. But I do know, I do know uh, that, you know, money and finance and accounting is the is the uh, the cement. The cement of everything That's probably the right word. Without money, nothing is cemented, nothing is concrete, nothing works. Uh, all aspects of life uh, works based on money. And now in recent years, IT has become the other side of the cement. It has become IT and finance and accounting. They're the backbone of every organization. Now, obviously, I'm not going to talk about accounting and finance and things. It's not my field. But I do know the following. I do know that accounting and finance, as we've known it for the last three, four hundred years, has drastically and will drastically, drastically change and it will be ch it will change at a fast pace. You know, the 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 uh, the advent of artificial intelligence into uh, developing automated and intelligent systems. We have moved from when I was a student. Oh, we used to show up with that card we, in the UK with that checkbook. If you get the they give the bank give you a card with your check, then every place will accept your check. Uh, when there is a limit on it, to now. You know what we have in Bahrain benefit and transfer money, and I think the future will hold uh, different dimensions. As we know, technology will change. However, I think uh, you know uh, the, the the issues with the accounts is prediction, predicting failures, predicting financial situations at the individual level at the corporation level and at the country level and at the international level we've seen disasters uh, and and you know corona has proved one aspect of it so and and 
The last thing I want to mention, which I really will ask Dr. Abdul Muttalibi, and probably is fed up of me repeating myself in the same direction. You know, at the end of the day, as Ahliya students, as Ahliya, we want to graduate people uh, who, who are really conversant with the latest developments who are knowledgeable about the fast changes, who, who know what to expect when they graduate, who are aware of the types of jobs and the dynamic changes of the jobs that are going to take place. I think the, the basic junior accountant will diminish and there'll be new kind of uh, people who, who will apply their human intelligence coupled with artificial intelligence coupled with technological applications to deal with our future kind of uh, accounting. I want to especially welcome Professor Khalid. Thank you very much. I've looked at your CV. It's very impressive and uh, uh, thank you for coming to Ahliya. It is really indeed uh, an honor to have you and I hope we will be in touch after this forum and maybe to see how we can cooperate with you as an individual and with Portsmouth University. Uh, I, I remember Portsmouth, uh, I visited it and I, I think it's by the sea, right? Yes, by the yes, sea. yes. Yeah, I remember it. So uh, thank you very much. Welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Professor Mansour for uh, this opening remark. And uh, now we will uh, move to Professor Khalid Al Husseini for uh, forward-looking disclosure, and we are actually uh, looking forward to this uh, presentation. The floor is for you, Professor. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. I would like to thank Professor Mansour, the president of Ahliya University, for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. <coughs> Abdul Muttalib, uh, for inviting me as well. I would like to thank the Dean, uh, Dr. Alam, and I will thank all the colleagues who attend the seminar, and I hope that you will find some useful information in this webinar. I understand it's the first webinar, and I hope it will not be the last for me. So I hope to join uh, future seminars on different topics in accounting. Uh, so the topic today is about forward-looking disclosure, and here I try to share my experience with one of the key research area I'm looking at over the last 20 years. So I will start by giving like a background about the forward looking disclosure and what has been done so far in this area. And then I will link it with one of my uh, working papers, which examine the role of audit committee on disclosing uh, forward looking information, either quality or quantity of disclosure. So in this background, I try to be uh, simple as much as I can. So in case if any of my colleagues or any of the researchers have no clue about the forward looking disclosure or accounting in general, I am sure that by the end of the presentation, you will get the points I'm trying to raise. So I will start by the simple definition what I mean by forward looking disclosure and then I will discuss the main concepts I used in this research. After that, I will move to the research motivation to explain why I do this research. I will be more specific mentioning the aim and objectives of the research paper I'm presenting today, the research questions I'm asking and the expected answer I hope to get. Uh, I will just mention to the literature related to the area of my interest which is about uh, forward-looking disclosure and audit committees. I will identify the gap. I will mention to the main contribution of the paper. Then I will show uh, some of the research hypothesis related to the relationship between forward-looking disclosure and audit committee overlaps. Then I will discuss the research method and in the research method, I will mention to the content analysis approach we used to measure uh, forward-looking disclosure and any types of disclosure in the accounting field. And also I will mention to the regression models I used to test the research hypothesis. And then I will mention to the key findings in my papers and I will conclude. So hopefully within 45 up to one hour, I will cover all these points. So as you can see from the title, the title have two words, 
forward looking and disclosure. So uh, this work is jointly uh, written with my uh, student. He she uh, completed her PhD, Hidayah Lawati, from Sultanate of Oman, and my colleague Rosa Segintova, his senior lecturer in Kaamuting uh, at University of Portsmouth. So the joint, joint work, we look at forward looking disclosure, we link it with audit committee overlap. I will explain the concept later. And we have three different projects. And they, today I will present one of these projects after introducing the concept of forward looking disclosure and its meaning. So starting from the word disclosure, what we mean by uh, disclosure? As you can see, disclosure means that the company make information available to outsiders. And this information could be financial information or non-financial information. The information could be mandatory information, which is required by law or voluntary, just they do what exceeds the mandatory information required. Also, the information could be disclosed formally via the annual report of the company or informally, the company can disclose information on their websites or on the social media. So disclosure in general means releasing information from insider to outsiders, releasing information to stakeholders, either financial or non-financial, mandatory or non-mandatory financial, uh, formal or informal communication channels. So this in general, this is what we mean here by uh, disclosure. If we look at the concept of forward looking disclosure, it means simply that we are talking about the current plans of the company. We are talking about the future plans of the company. So forward looking disclosure could be anything about the future. So it could be uh, future operating results. It could be future resources. It could be future revenues, cash flows, profitability. It could be any risk or uncertainty which might the company face in the near future. And simply we can find out this information about the future if you look at any section of the annual report, if you read the section and you find that the company say, we expect sales revenue to be increased by 10%. This sentence simply, because he mentioned the word expect, this sentence simply considered as forward looking information or forward looking disclosure. So the information itself in the annual report could be classified and into mandatory disclosure or branch disclosure. So mandatory means that the information required by laws like the financial statements and the notes of the financial statements. Anything else above what is required by law is considered as voluntary disclosure. Also in accounting, we differentiate between two important types of the information produced by the company. If we look at this picture, this uh, picture from the Oman Air annual report, you will find we have the statement of profit or loss and the other comprehensive income. This is one of the statements and we have the chairman statement. If you look at the statement, you will find numbers. You will not find any narrative in the statement of profit and loss uh, statements. But if you look at the chairman statement, you will find just one, two, three, four, five paragraphs. This narrative. So we differentiate between financial statements, which is statement prepared at the end of the financial year, summarize the all activities over year, and the chairman statement will be a kind of narrative reporting, give the chairman the chance to give some comments about the current performance and also to predict more information about the future performance. So someone might ask me, should we consider, we know that financial statements are mandatory. What about narrative reporting? Does uh, narrative reporting is mandatory or voluntary? If we go back here, you will find something in green. If we look at the mandatory disclosure, all financial statements are mandatory. The notes of the financial statement is considered as narrative reporting and mandatory. All voluntary disclosure in green is voluntary, which means that narrative reporting could be mandatory, like not the financial statement, or voluntary, anything uh, exceeding the mandatory disclosure. So the question is, why do we need to look at forward-looking disclosure? 
This is a long debate since uh, one of the research article published in a Journal of Accounting and Economics in 1989. The main conclusion of this article is that financial statements lost their relevance and the users of the financial statements are no longer satisfied with the quality of the information produced by financial statements. So what's wrong with the financial statements? The financial statements summarize what happened over 12 months. And the financial statements are published three or six months after the financial year end. So the users of the financial statement find this information too historical. So you need some new information which helps them to make the decision. That's why there is a requirement or like a call for a new model for business reporting, which includes forward-looking information, non-financial information, risk information. This narrative section of the annual report should complement the financial statements and this should make the users of the financial statements satisfy for their needs. Also, there is like a kind of debate about why we need forward-looking disclosure and the most of the common agreement that we need forward-looking disclosure because we can discuss issues about the future because we can do it for the financial statement. The second point, disclosing more about information about the future will reduce the information asymmetry between managers and the stakeholders. And finally, there is huge literature about the usefulness of forward-looking disclosure for financial analysts and investors. And the literature confirms that this type of information provide value relevant information for financial analysts and potential investors. So if we look at the literature on forward-looking disclosure, we will find that the literature is classified into three categories. The first category, is about the current practice. So early study on forward-looking disclosure, try to find out the extent to which companies disclose information about the future. So they try, some authors try to read the annual report and try to find out how many sentences or how many paragraphs or how many words related to the future. And this is what I mentioned here as current practice. The second one, determinants of forward-looking disclosure, because from the first one, they found that there is like variation between companies. Some companies disclose more, others disclose less. So the second uh, group of study try to explain what are the main drivers for disclosing information about the future in the annual report, especially in this type of information is voluntary, not mandatory. The third line of the literature try to find out the impact of forward-looking disclosure on firm performance, information asymmetry, analyst forecast, cost of capital, and share price anticipation of earnings. And this is still ongoing research area for the forward-looking disclosure. What this study finds, mainly they found that the level of forward-looking disclosure varies between companies, between industries, between countries, and even for the same company, the level of disclosure varies over years. So the company disclosed more or less based on some circumstances. And the second group of study, they found that there are some firm characteristics like firm size, firm profitability, gearing ratio, risk level affect the level of forward-looking disclosure. Also, corporate governance mechanism like board characteristics and all committee characteristics affect the level of forward-looking disclosure. And finally, they found that forward-looking disclosure affect the investor's ability to predict future earnings. So all this study has raised very important issues about the factors affecting the decision of the company to disclose information about the future. And if the company disclose information about the future, what is the potential impact of such information? Another group of study looked at uh, audit committee characteristics because audit committee is uh, responsible for overseeing the quality of the financial information and the disclosure practice of the company and most of the literature on audit committee characteristics and disclosure in general find that 
audit size, which means number of audit committee members, audit independence, and audit meetings, which refer to the number of meetings, affect the quality of financial uh, disclosure and disclosure practice. And since the last 10 years, since the last global financial crisis, one variable, one variable had been introduced to the literature, which called audit committee overlap. This variable at that time was like a new variable, and the main reason for raising this issue because some people was believing that the crisis due to the low quality of the financial information and the low quality of financial information was because of the poor quality of corporate governance. And if we are talking about the poor quality of corporate governance, people start blaming audit committee because audit committee has the main role in the ensuring the financial reporting of is of high quality. So studies started looking at audit committee overlapping and how does this affect the quality of financial reporting. However, they didn't use a direct measure of the quality of financial reporting. What they use? They use earnings management and audit fees as a proxy for the quality of financial reporting. So we believe that this study, although they provide a significant contribution to the literature, they didn't examine the direct relationship between the audit committee overlapping and uh, narrative disclosure or forward looking disclosure. So we start thinking about uh, this topic. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, for, uh, the first author of this topic uh, from Oman and she started her PhD looking at a very interesting story. The story started, so the story from Oman Financial Institution, the story started from the corporate governance code because in Oman in 2016, they introduced a new code of governance and they have raised an interesting story about audit committee overlap. I will explain the concept, I will explain the story later. So this motivates us to look at the Omani context because their interesting story in their new code about audit committee overlap. At the same time, we found that in Oman, they have center of governance and sustainability, and they are working so hard. They are uh, organizing conferences every time to find out the best way to improve the quality of financial reporting. They are very keen to improve the quality of corporate governance as well as the quality of financial reporting. So we expect that if they have this new code and if they have this great effort to improve the quality of governance and reporting, they should have no issue about uh, the quality of financial reporting. But when we look at the Capital Market Authority in Oman, we found that many examples of low quality of external auditing. For example, we found that KBMG was suspended from new audit work by the Omani regulators, which indicates that there is something wrong in the quality of the audits provided by these big four companies. So this raised like a question in our minds, to what extent the new code helped to improve the quality of the financial reporting. And at the same time, we found that the Omani Vision 2040 focused on forward-looking disclosure and also looking at a sample of annual reports by some Omani companies, we find that managers try to convince the readers that they are working hard to achieve the Omani 2040 vision. So we find that a very interesting story to make a link between the audit committee overlap and the forward-looking disclosure to find out to what extent this code helped to improve the quality of the information disclosed by the company and to what extent this company can achieve the Omani Vision 2040 and also to what extent the efforts by the Center of Governance and Sustainability help in improving the quality of financial reporting and the governance and to see what, what's wrong 
with the big four firms in Oman. So before we start the project, so we mentioned the different concepts just to make it clear that in my presentation, I will refer to some concepts like interlock audit committee and overlap audit committee. The Omani code here was talking about the concept of overlap. So overlap audit committee means that the number of audit committee members serve on multiple boards within the same firm. The word interlock here refers to the audit committee members who are working as members on other firms. So take it simple, interlock means external memberships. So the audit committee chair member is member in company E internally, and at the same time is a member of company B externally on the audit committee members. But when we mention to overlap, and this is what is mentioned in the corporate governance code, it means that audit committee member, he is member in the audit committee, and at the same time, he is a member of risk committee, and also he is a member of compensation committee. So overlap means internal multiple directorship, interlock external multiple directorship. So we consider these kind of members as busy members, are busy enough. So some busy internally, some busy externally, and we have some cases they are busy internally and externally. So we'll have to look at this. And uh, I think I explain what I mean by forward-looking disclosure, information about the future. Also, we will discuss the two concepts of disclosure quality and disclosure quantity. When I refer to disclosure quantity, I mean the number of statements in the annual report which related to the future. Disclosure quality means that the attributes of these statements. So the main questions we or the main objective here, we examine the impact of audit committee overlapping on disclosure quality and the quantity in the financial institutions in Oman. And I think from this slide, I explained why Oman. However, I will try to give some details about the Omani context. Uh, so the Omani stock market uh, regulators has adopted the leading corporate governance uh, practice uh, their code started, or they issued the code in 2002, and the companies listed in the Omani stock market have been fully implemented in this code in 2004. In 2016, the new code replaced the old one, and the new code gave importance to the issue of overlapping by preventing audit committee share to be overlapped internally with any other committee. However, the codes allow other audit committee members to be overlapped internally with other committees. So now the story here is about the code, which emphasizes that audit committee overlapping is important. Audit committee share is allowed to is not allowed to be overlapped. Audit committee members are allowed to be overlapped. So the new code aim to improve the quality of the financial reporting and to protect investors, board members, and all stakeholders. However, what we found after this new code, there we still have some scandals in Oman in general. And based on the literature, these scandals could be due to ineffective corporate governance codes. That's why the Center of Governance and Sustainability tried hard to find out the role of the Board of Directors in improving the quality of financial reporting. So again, the story that overlap is allowed for members of the audit committee, but is not allowed for the audit committee chair. They was hoping that by this practice, this will impact the by improving the quality of financial reporting. But what they found that still they have some concern because of the recent scandals in the Omani context. We looked at forward looking specifically on Oman because uh, we have different types of information, but the main reason for looking at for looking for uh, forward looking disclosure in Oman because of their vision 2040. And uh, in a bio study, we found that many companies disclose information about the future to satisfy the vision 
2040, and also the Omani Corporate Governance Code emphasizes that companies should disclose information which provide relevant information to investors to help them to make the right decision. And the literature shows that forward-looking disclosure is one of the key information which help investors to make the right decision. Also, the code has suggested that all listed companies should disclose information about forward-looking information. So they need to disclose information about their future outlook uh, related to the industry or the economy in general or the international markets. Our focus on, on the Omani financial institutions was because that this uh, sector is neglected in the literature. Most of the disclosure study look at non-financial sector. And another reason in uh, most financial institutions around the world, financial institutions are more regulated compared with non-financial uh, sector. So the research problem is we believe that while the audit committee chair overlapping is shown not allowed, undesirable in the Omni context, and this might be the case, we still found that some literature and some theories mention that overlapping is something good that we should encourage company to do. So we try to find out what are the impact of audit committee overlapping in the Omni context. Specifically, we try to find out the impact of audit committee overlapping on forward-looking disclosure. We looked at different types of audit committee overlapping, and this is one of the major contributions to the literature. And also in our study, we differentiate between the two concepts of disclosure, the quality and quantity of disclosure. So our main research question to what extent audit committee overlapping is considered as beneficial or harmful for the user of uh, corporate narrative reporting. In other words, we try to ask, does audit committee overlapping improve the quality and the quantity of forward-looking disclosure? If the answer is yes, the, the second question is, what type of audit committee overlapping affect the quality and quantity of disclosure? Looking at the literature, we found that there is a very limited studies on the concepts of audit committee overlapping in general, and uh, particularly on audit committee overlapping and the quality of financial reporting. And authors, when they use or when they examine the quality of financial reporting, they use just proxies for financial reporting like uh, earnings management or accruals and audit fees. And none of this study try to link this concept of committee overlapping with the narrative reporting, specifically the quality and quantity of forward-looking disclosure. So this one of the key limitation in the literature. The second key limitation in the literature, I found that most of the literature on audit committee overlapping was focusing on the US context. No research to the best of our knowledge in other uh, countries or other developing countries. Even so, we found that most of the research which focus on US context focus on non-financial firms. So to the best of our knowledge, there is no research have been examined the impact of audit committee overlapping on the quality of financial reporting in general for the financial institutions. So we believe that we have uh, some contribution to the literature. First contribution to knowledge, a new analysis or new empirical evidence on the impact of a new variable which introduced recently to the corporate governance literature, which is audit committee overlapping, its impact on the quality and the quantity of forward open disclosure. In terms of the methodology, we believe that we are the first to measure the quality of the information in the Omani context financial sector. We provide a very strong evidence that Disclosure quantity is not a good proxy for quality. The US research, just to look at the number of audit committee overlapped, we provide incremental contribution by providing different measures of audit committee overlapping. 
So we looked at the chair of the audit committee, if he is overlapped or not. We also looked at different types of overlapping, like overlap, overlapping with compensation committee, overlapping with uh, risk committee, audit committee overlapped with financial expertise, audit committee overlapped, and at the same time, he is interlocked, which means that he has other memberships outside the company, and some audit committee have uh, chairs in the company. So we try to find out which of these types affect the quality and quantity of financial reporting. So to build up our research hypothesis, we found two different story. Uh, we found a theory, agency theory, which mentions that overlaps something good we should encourage because we expect a positive impact on uh, the positive impact of the over audit committee overlapping on the quality of financial reporting. Based on the agent theory, it is believed that uh, overlapping will result in reducing the information asymmetry between committees because one member will be working in different committees. So there is no hidden information in this case. He will know everything about the committees he engaged in. So they believe that overlapping reduces information asymmetry and overlapping also will help the audit committee member to gain more information about other committee, about other activities of the company. So they believe that overlapping will enhance and improve the quality of financial reporting. And we agree with their arguments. So our expectation here is that we expect firm disclosure quality will be improved if audit committee overlapped. So when we mention here audit committee overlapped, we are not differentiating between audit committee chair or audit committee members. So we believe that either the chair or the members, if they are overlapped based on the agency theory, we expect the quality of the financial reporting will be improved. On the other hand, we found another story. It's based on business theory. They mentioned that we expect the impact will be negative. So uh, just suppose that now we are the head of accounting department in a business school. And at the same time, you are a member in the management department and a member in marketing department and a member in engineering department. Based on this theory, you will be very busy. You will not be able to concentrate on your main task as a head of accounting department. And this kind of busyness will affect the quality of the decision you will take. So what this theory said that if the board members are uh, overlapped, they will be too overloaded to make the tasks they require to do. And this will affect the quality of the decisions they have. And even the research found that there is a negative relationship between overlapping and uh, earnings management and also overlapping and audit fees, indicating that overlapping reduce the quality of financial statements. We agree. We like these arguments. We say that, of course, overlapping will affect, but affect what? Affect the quality or the quantity. So in this slide, we say that overlapping means that reducing information asymmetry, gaining more understanding about the company, and this will enhance the quality of financial reporting. But when we go to this side, the expect negative we agreed to some extent. We say that yes, overlapping will affect the quantity of financial reporting. So these audit committee members will be busy enough so they will not disclose more information than the quantity because they are very busy. They are more likely to focus only on the quality of the financial information. So what's of high quality will be focused on. Any minor issues will not be disclosed in their report. So Based on that, we strongly believe that audit committee overlapping will help to improve the quality of the financial reporting, and at the same time, it will reduce the quantity of 
the financial reporting because people will not have enough time to disclose too much information which might not be necessary for the decision makers. So we have built seven research hypotheses to examine the relationship between audit committee overlapping and forward looking quality and quantity. So now we have seven measures for audit committee overlapping. The total audit committee overlapping. If the audit committee overlap, if the audit committee share is overlapped or not, audit committee overlap with financial and accounting skills, audit committee overlapped with compensation committee, audit committee overlapped with risk committee, audit committee directors who has director uh, multiple directorship externally, and audit committee with chair ownership. So just to summarize these seven research hypotheses, we expect that for audit committee overlapping, it will affect positively the quality of financial reporting, negatively the quantity of the financial reporting. So test our hypothesis, we focus on the financial sectors in Oman. The total companies in Oman is 36 Omani companies. We choose uh, year 2014 2018 two years before and two years after the code we hand collect all the information from the annual uh, report we use the content analysis and we run some regression analysis to find out the impact of overlapping on forward-looking disclosure so this is our, our sample. We covered banking sector, insurance, financial service, investment, and real estate companies. So five years times 36, this gave us a total of 180. Uh, can, can you follow me? Okay, so to measure uh, forward looking disclosure, we start by focusing on chairman statement of many institutions because we found uh, evidence from the literature that uh, chairman statement contains significant information about the future. So we use content analysis. Content analysis means that we analyze the content of the narrative data included in the chairman statement. So we count the number of sentences related to the future. To measure the quantity of disclosure, we simply count the number of sentences about the future. Sometimes we found the sentence is too long and contains different single types of information. So we divide this sentence as required to multiple text units. For the quality measure, we follow BT et al. 2004. BT et al. Uh, has identified that quality can be measured by looking at the attributes of disclosure. And they have mentioned that the attributes include if the information is financial or non-financial, if the information contains good news or bad news, if the information about the future or the, about the past, and if the information is qualitative or quantitative. So these are our measures. See, this example of the sentence we extracted from the annual report, if you look at the first sentence, with an expected decline in government revenues and reduced government spending, the banking sector may need to contend with challenges in the short to medium term. So in this sentence, because they discuss uh, something related to revenues and spending, we consider this as financial sentence. The revenues and spending is declining. We consider this as bad news. We consider this sentence as qualitative sentence because there is no numbers. They don't explain this decline by what percentage. And the sentence talk about a uh, short and long uh, term. Second sentence, same, but we'll find numbers, 89%, so it's quantitative. 
it talk about humanization, humanization ratio, which is non-financial information. It's a good news, and you can see the good news from the word enjoys and the word uh, increase it further, and it uh, talk about short term. Last sentence, to, uh, talk about uh, revenue, so it's financial, it contains some good news, it is qualitative because there is no numbers related to their prediction, and it is talk about budget and the part of 2017, so it's a short-term forecast. So what we have done, we have read the whole uh, chairman statement of all annual reports in our sample. Of course, the first author start reading, and then I read a sample of these reports, and we sit together, we discuss our scoring or our coding for these uh, scores. Also, we have used Kronbach Alpha to find out the validity of our scores, and we found that the Kronbach Alpha is 91%, which indicates that our score was valid. We have used a huge number of variables to find out factors affecting disclosure quality and quantity. Just I will take it simple. FLD quantity, forward-looking disclosure quantity. FLD quality, forward-looking disclosure quality. The B1 until B7 represent the seven measures of audit committee overlapping. So B1, audit committee overlapping, number of audit committee overlapping. Number two, audit committee overlapping share, if the share of the audit committee overlapped or not. Number three, Audit committee overlapping with compensation committee, one, and, and number four, audit committee overlapping with risk committee, five, audit committee overlapping with external directorship or multiple directorship, number six, audit committee overlapping with finance and accounting expertise, number seven, audit committee overlapping with uh, share ownership. So these are the seven main variables related to our seven research hypotheses, and the rest are controlled. So we controlled for corporate governance mechanisms because the literature found that corporate governance affect forward-looking uh, disclosure. We also controlled for firm characteristics. We also controlled for uh, the accounting standard, if the banks or the financial institutions using IOFI or not. We control for some country specific variables like if the board include relatives or not, if the board include members from the royal family or not, and of course we control for year dummy and industry dummy. So these are our measures. So simply, so I will not go through all these, but simply to measure the forward looking disclosure, we count the number of sentences referring to the future. But to measure the quality, we identify the four attributes of quality. The first attribute is number non-financial orientation. The second attribute tone orientation. The third attribute time orientation. The third, uh, fourth one qualitative orientation. So identify this orientation and divide it by four. So financial orientation means that if the sentence contains non-financial information. The tune, if the sentence contain good or bad news. The time orientation, if the sentence contain short or long-term forecasts. The qualitative, if the sentence is qualitative or quantitative. And these are the seven main variables which are related to the seven high boss. The first one overlap all committee members. The number of all committee members overlapped. Second one, overlap odd committee share if the odd committee share is overlapped or not. Third one, overlap odd committee with compensation committee. The third one, overlap odd committee with risk committee. Fourth one, overlap odd committee with multiple directorship. Overlap odd committee with finance and accounting expertise. And the last one, overlap share with uh, ownership of 5% or more. 
These are all the control variables related to corporate governance we have considered. So mainly it's the board characteristics and audit committee characteristics. We also uh, considered firm characteristics based on the literature, which shows that some of the firm characteristics affect the quality and the quantity of financial reporting. We also consider the ownership uh, consideration as one of our variables. So when we do this kind of descriptive analysis, we find like something uh, looks interesting to us. First of all, so this, the first forward looking, uh, we found that on average in chairman statement, companies have 13 information about the future. The largest number of sentences referring to the future in this company was 40 sentences, and some companies has nothing. So there is kind of variation between companies, but at the same time, that's on average 13. When we differentiate the sentence to financial, non-financial, we don't find any significant difference between financial and non-financial, which means that companies have a good balance between financial and the non-financial information in the chairman statement. However, when we looked at the type of sentence, if the sentence contains good news or bad news, surprisingly, and as we expected, good news have on, on average about 12 sentences, bad news just two, which indicates that companies are biased in reporting good news and they try to hide some bad news in the chairman statement of many companies. When we look at the short and long term, we found that most of the forecasts in the chairman statement is long term forecasts. Also, we found that most of the forward looking information in the OMNI context are qualitative. So they have some prediction, but without any numbers. We run the correlation analysis and uh, the main uh, outcome or the main story from this correlation analysis, we found that one of the most interesting story because most of the literature in disclosure study uh, use disclosure quantity as a proxy for quality. But uh, our correlation analysis show evidence that there is no correlation between the two variables, which indicates that it is not safe to consider disclosure quantity as a good proxy for disclosure quality. The second point we have got from the correlation analysis, when we looked at the correlation between the independent variables, we didn't find any uh, issues of much linearity. There is no much linearity problem. And also this was confirmed when we use VIF. So we use OLS regression after we consider all the OLS assumptions. And this is like a summary of the main findings. So start by H1. H1, we expect to see a, like a positive association between audit committee overlapping and the quality of financial reporting and a negative association between audit committee overlapping and the quantity of financial reporting. And H1 is supported. We exactly found what, what, what we expected and the result of H1 is in line with agency theory and also is in line with the business theory. H2 also is supported based on agency and the business theory. We find that if the audit committee share is overlapped, this have a positive impact on the quality of financial reporting or the quality of forward looking disclosure. They have positive impact and it has a negative impact on the quantity of financial reporting, which is perfect, which something we should encourage many financial institutions to allow audit committee chair to be overlapped because the result here says that overlapping the audit committee chair does not affect the quality of financial reporting badly. It improves the quality of financial reporting and of course it reduces uh, the quantity. If we reduce the quantity, we reduce the noise we might introduce to the stakeholders or the people who are making decisions based on the reports. 
H3, we found no impact on the old commit share, which overlap with compensation committee. No impact, the impact is positive, but insignificant. When the audit committee overlap with risk committee, we found the impact only on the quality of financial reporting. The quality of financial reporting improve. Uh, when we found that busy, busy, busy audit committee, so the audit committee member who overlapped internally and externally, we find this type of busy, busy, busy audit committee member has a positive impact on both quality and quantity of financial uh, reporting. And this was surprised to us. We don't have explanation why it affects uh, quantity positively, but I think if we follow up this research with some interviews, we might find uh, the, the answer. As we expected, when the audit committee overlapped has financial and accounting expertise, the impact on the quality is improved as well as the, qual the quantity is increased. If the audit committee uh, member overlapped and have a share in the company, sharing the ownership, again, the quality increase, but there is no impact on uh, quantity. We understand that the sample is small, 180. This is why we didn't get all the results as we expected. We also understand that we have here about 27 variables, plus year dummies and industrial dummy, and all these variables with a small sample size might cause some problems. So we're still working on this area to find out a model which eliminate the impact of these variables. We might use principal component analysis to group these variables to reduce the number of variables, or we might think about using other method which deal with this small sample size. So these are our main results. We, of course, do, we did a further analysis, but because of the time limitation, I just conclude that the paper, I think, uh, provide a, a significant contribution to two types of literature. The first literature is the disclosure literature. I think we move the literature forward by looking at a new variable, which is audit committee overlapping, in a new context, which is Oman, in financial institutions and link this with uh, forward-looking disclosure. And at the same time, we'll look at two different dimensions of disclosure, quality and quantity. And we provide evidence that audit committee overlapping and overlapped audit committee chair positively affect the quality of forward-looking disclosure and negatively affect the quantity of forward-looking disclosure. So this is our first uh, conclusion. The second conclusion, we found that overlapped audit committee members with financial expertise and who have multiple directorship affect both the quality and the quantity of forward-looking disclosure. And I think this point needs like further investigation by doing, let's say, some interviews to find out why are these people who are very busy disclose more disclosure rather than focus only on the quality of forward-looking disclosure. And I think one of the most important results, we found that there is no relationship between disclosure quality and the quantity. Therefore, researchers shouldn't use disclosure quantity as a good proxy for quality. So if it is quantity, they should build their story on the quantity of financial reporting rather than the quality of financial reporting. But one of the most significant conclusion for our analysis, we want to say that the code should be revised. The corporate governance code in Oman should be revised because the code prevents audit committee share to be overlapped. Our results say that if the audit committee share overlapped, he will gain more knowledge about the company. The information asymmetry between uh, committees will be reduced and the quality of financial reporting will be increased. And at the same time, the quantity and all the noise 
related to the quantity of the information will be reduced as, as well. So our recommendation here, just the code should be revised. We should allow audit committee chair to be overla to be overlapped like all audit committee members as well. I think this is the end of my presentation. I hope I finish on time. And thank you again for inviting me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Professor Khaled, for uh, this, uh, this uh, wonderful uh, presentation and for this wonderful uh, topic. Uh, just, just one question. I, I, I will start the question with one question, uh, Professor Khaled. At the end of your presentation, one of your recommendation, which is about uh, to, uh, to to let like the to have an overlapping between the the the, the audit committee member internally, uh, but uh, this overlapping, as you mentioned, it will reduce the symmetry of information. But what about the symmetry of information for the externals? It will be affected, or what? What do you think? Doctor Khaled, I think your mic is muted. OK, yes, thank you. Bruce. Thank you. So if the audit committee member uh, overlapped internally, this reduce the internal information asymmetry between the committees. Uh, if he uh, overlapped externally and if he have like external membership, I think he will be more open to gain more experience about the other companies he is working at. And this may increase his knowledge in the area he is looking for okay. and this might improve the quality of the information he disclosed because now he's aware about other companies in the same through or the interlocking. Sorry? Like, like through interlocking yes yes okay okay we, we, we have one, one question from dr hedaya she she asked that uh, you mean that the notes on financial statement are not mandatory because one of the main condition in your uh, research you, you mentioned that in the beginning no, I mentioned that for the notes to financial statement, these notes are mandatory. Mm -hmm. And this type of narrative reporting, what I mentioned that I mentioned is it was in green line. I said this green line is narrative reporting, but uh, notes to financial statement is mandatory one. Uh, OK, OK. We hope uh, he answered your question, uh, Dr. Hidaya. And also we have one question from Professor Robin. Uh, he said that when you define disclosure, it was uh, restricted to the audience of uh, shareholders and investors. Why uh, ignore other uh, stakeholders? OK, so I, I define disclosure widely, uh, all stakeholders. But when I talk about forward looking disclosure, I have significant literature about the importance of forward looking disclosure specifically for the stock market participants like investors and financial analysts. Mm -hmm. OK, and also we have uh, one question from uh, our colleague, Dr. Gagan. Uh, Dr. Gagan, he said that uh, recently, like uh, in UK, the regulators ask uh, all audit firms to split their audit job from other audit uh, job. Uh, and he would like to ask you if, if you can suggest some uh, a new area of research which, which is related to that news, which is uh, any related to UK uh, regulation. For auditing, I think the most recent development is the extended audit report in 2013. Mm -hmm. So what happened? There is a new regulation about auditing. So auditors now provide more information in the report. If you compare the report before 2013 and after, you are comparing one page with 12 pages. So you will find like uh, key audit matters. This is a huge or a new research area about auditing in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I think if you are thinking that you can link the extended audit report with forward looking information, to what extent increasing the length of the external auditor is linked with the quality and the quantity of forward looking disclosure? This is one of the area I might suggest. Uh -huh. Okay. And also, uh, Dr. Hidayah, she's mentioned that maybe there is an are a hidden bad information in the case of overlapping. Yes, we suppose that it might be good or bad. We don't know. We expect that it should be fine based on the agency theory. 
but based on the business series say that people might be busy and this might have negative impact. What our results show that there is a positive impact. So we looked at the positive side of the story. This story might be applicable to a man only. I think this issue should be examined again in different context to say to generalize the result for all contexts. So just we we'll look at one country financial sector. So the story might not be valid for other non financial sector, for example. OK, and, and also other there is other one uh, question. Uh, do you suggest or do you have or you will suggest in your research to have like uh, a list or a checklist for the forward looking disclosure like like key keywords to be uh, look for specific keywords? OK, this is a very good question. This is mainly based on the type of content analysis you are using. So if your sample size is large in my research in UK, we have 8000 company. I can't read the annual report of 8000 company. So in the UK, I used a computer software using some keyword to find out the sentence related to the future. Mm -hmm. But for, for Oman, it's 180 companies, small sample size. We are looking at German statement only, just one page or one page and a half. So if the sample size is small, I think it might be better and more accurate if you read yourself the mm -hmm. statement of the German and try to find out the sentence related to the future without restricting yourself to any keywords. Because sometimes the sentence itself is not including any keyword about the future, but the meaning of the sentence referring to the future. OK, and, and also one more question, Professor, if you have like a financial report which is published in different languages. So in this case, you will return back to the translated term is it in my case you mean or in general? In general, for the, the, the people who are looking for forward looking disclosure, sometimes in Arabic, or maybe it's published in uh, Germany, or it's been published in uh, a French language or different language. So it's depend on the, the researcher which which term to consider it like part of forward looking. It's, it's brought to that area or what? Yeah. Yes, I think again, if you are using the computer, you need some keywords. So the simplest way is to read a sample of this report, try to find out what the common keywords used in the report. Mm -hmm. Then you can find out a dictionary to find similar word to the word chosen from the annual report and use this keyword to search for the forward looking information. Mm -hmm. If the sample is small, it's better just to read and try to find out the sentence referring to the future. So there is no need to translate. For example, if I'm doing the research, let's say on Egypt and all Egyptian annual report in Arabic. So I will read it in Arabic, understand in Arabic, and just what I need, I need just how many sentences referring to the future in company A. So I read count without any translation because I know Arabic and English. Yeah, yeah, I just put the number from each annual report. OK, so 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 that I mean, we can conclude that for the forward looking disclosure, it's depend on the researcher point of view or how the researcher will analyze the, the, the words or the sentence inside. So yes. I mean, you, you, yeah, we, we cannot consider that like, like there is a strict list you have to follow it or there is a specific no, list. At all. Mm -hmm. In one of my research, I was comparing UK, USA and Germany. And for German companies, I found some Annual report in, uh, in English, but some are in German, yeah. so I can't read them. And I was using computer software. I need some keywords. So what I did, I asked a German colleague to find out my list in English. He translated all the keywords from English to German language. Okay. And just run the software to, to make it to easy to understand. Also. Yeah, the software just mentioned to me that the number of sentences is 19. So I don't know the meaning of the sentence. I just need this number for the search purpose. Yeah, OK, 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 OK. Um, we, we have we have still we have uh, maybe we'll take one more final question or uh, no, just uh, uh, Professor Hidayah, she want to thank you. She's the professor from uh, Egypt, Tanta University. She would like to thank you and also all the audience here. They would like to thank you. And uh, we are uh, all, and also we are from Ahli University, from Accounting and Economic Department, College of Business and Finance. Uh, we are very happy and blessed to have you today with us, Professor Khalid Al Husseini. 
and uh, inshallah we will continue uh, having like such uh, wonderful webinars with one uh, with the the uh, the well known researchers like professor khalid al husseini and also we are invite uh, our uh, our all of our audience to uh, participate if they want to participate with us in any topic they can immediately contact us and also if you need any question uh, يعني, I, I will say it يعني, I will not let Professor Khalid al husseini to say it as because he usually say if you ask him anything he will say yes and he will say it in Arabic uh, thank you doctor thank you Professor Khalid thank you for this uh, wonderful uh, lecture actually and uh, we hope to see you inshallah in in a future uh, lectures and thank you inshallah. thank you again. thank you thank you very much for inviting me and inshallah we'll see you soon inshallah thank you professor thank you everybody see you okay.